presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore and Bettis family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. By the Friends of Idaho Public Television and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. How do we interact with the world? We use our five senses, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching. But how do they all work? And what do they have in common? Find out. Science Trek is next. Hi, I'm Joan Cartan Hansen, and welcome to Science Trek. And welcome to St. Alphonsus Hospital here in Boise. Doctors are standing by to answer your questions, and later on in the show, we'll learn a little bit more about the brain. But first, let's learn more about the five senses. So, what are your five senses? Seeing, hearing, smelling, taste, and touch. We all use our five senses to understand what's happening around us. For some, that means not becoming somebody else's dinner. So let's learn about our five senses. We see with our eyes. Your eyeball is about the size of a ping pong ball. It's covered by the sclera, a tough outer layer. That's the white part of your eye. When you look at something, light travels through the cornea, the front part of your eye. It goes through the pupil, that's the round black hole in the center. A muscle called the iris, or the colored part of your eye, opens and closes the pupil to regulate the amount of light coming in. Light travels through the lens, which focuses the image on the back of your eye, or the retina. Nerve cells on the retina send the image to the optic nerve and then to your brain. We hear with our ears. A sound creates energy. Those sound waves enter your ears and travel down the ear canal to the eardrum. This thin piece of skin is stretched very tight, and when the sound waves hit it, it begins to vibrate. That makes three tiny bones known as the hammer, anvil, and stirrup move too. This moves or transmits those sound waves into a snail-shaped structure called the cochlea. The cochlea is filled with fluid and 17,000 tiny hair-like tissues. Sound waves move through the fluid and bend the hair. Somehow the movement of the hair stimulates the fibers leading to the acoustic nerve, and that nerve takes the sound to the brain. The sense of smell is probably our oldest sense. Tiny particles too small to be seen with your eyes float into your nose when you breathe. They drift to the top end of your nasal cavity. Inside your nose are two small areas called the olfactory epithelium. These are about the size of your thumbnail, but they contain about 20 million olfactory cells with tiny hairs or cilia. Those scent particles stick to the cilia and trigger nerve cells. Those nerve cells send a message to the brain, which identifies the scent. Your sense of taste begins with your tongue. Your tongue is covered with thousands of tiny bumps called papilla. Inside those bumps, on the back part of the roof of your mouth and in the very back of your throat, are 10,000 taste buds. The tiny cells have little hairs. Dissolved food particles seep into the hairs and the taste buds sense whether the food is sweet, sour, bitter, or salt. That information is sent to your brain and then you decide if the food is good or bad. Did you know most of your sense of taste comes from your sense of smell? Slut share. Hey! Your sense of touch is really a bunch of scents that work together and you start with your skin. Your skin is the largest organ in the body. The layers of skin have at least seven different kinds of sensors, and there are as many as a million of these microscopic touch sensors in a square inch of skin. Some of these nerves respond to light pressure. Others respond to heavy pressure. Some are activated by heat or cold or even vibrations. So when you touch something, all that information activates the nerves, and that information goes to your brain. 
Your brain is really the most important part of your five senses. The brain collects information from all these different sources, and that's how we make sense of the world. You guys ready? Yeah. Let's eat. Yeah! And joining me now to answer your questions about the five senses are two pediatricians, Dr. Naya Antic and Dr. Bradley Bishop. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you, Joan, for inviting us. It's our pleasure to be here. Okay, let's go to your questions. Hi, my name is Carly. I go to Sagal Elementary School, and my question is, do we really only have five senses? Carly, that's a great question. Yes, we humans only have five senses, sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. Some animals have more than five, but that's pretty rare. Hi, my name is Rory. I go to White Pine Elementary School, and my question is, what sense do we use the most? So Jorge, that depends on what senses you use. Um, for, I believe, most people, vision is probably the most used sense, since we use it all day um, as our eyes are open. Um, we do use our sense of smell and taste at times. Um, and our sense of hearing is always there as well. Um, but I would say the one we probably use the most and rely on the most is our vision. Hi, my name is Kaden. I go to White Pine Elementary School. And my question is, what makes us hear sound? So the ear works like a cone to absorb wavelengths of sound. And as the sound comes into our ear, it hits our eardrum, which then converts the sound wave into a mechanical movement that then gets transmitted into an electrical signal through the cochlea that gets sent up to the brain to our hearing section of the brain and then we hear the sound. Hi, my name's Ron. I go to Jefferson and my question is how do taste buds work? So taste buds are very specific cells within your tongue that help you sense flavor. When you eat something that's sweet, like sugar, um, it is, actually has a receptor on there that can um, signal that you are tasting that sweet substance. It sends that signal to the brain. Um, the taste buds within your tongue can sense four different things. They can sense sweetness, um, sour, bitter, and salty. Hi, my name is Rose. I go to White Pine Elementary School, and my question is, what is the first of the five senses that develops in an unborn baby? Wow, that is a very complicated question. My thought would be that sound might be the first sense that develops. Because studies have shown that when babies are born, even on the first day of life, they will have specific signals in their brain that get triggered when their mom speaks to them. Most moms, when they're pregnant, are talking to their unborn babies in their tummy, and so they hear those sounds even during development in mom's tummy. Hi, my name is Haifa. I got a difference among tree. How do your fingers feel? So within your fingers, you have um, certain cells that are sensory cells that can help you feel touch. Um, depending on how close these cells are together, helps you determine whether there's any texture to what you're feeling. Um, if you'll notice that it's easier to feel something with your fingers than it is to feel something with the back of your hand, as far as whether there's texture or anything like that. But these little cells are able to sense, um, as you touch something, is able to sense that pressure as you touch, and then sends the signals to your brain and lets you know that you are touching something. Hi, my name is Georgia. I go to White Pine Elementary, and my question is, when you see a color, how do you know that everybody else sees the same color? So color perception actually is a difficult science. When we see a color, we learn that the apple is red, and the wavelength that is emitted from the apple into our brain triggers a special cell in the eyeball called a cone cell that sends a signal to the brain and we interpret that as red. Now sometimes people think that they see the same color as other people but they may be colorblind and so there are special tests where you can de determine that or diagnose that by comparing what the patient sees versus what the doctor or everyone else sees. But so we really actually don't know until we do those tests if everybody actually is seeing the exact same color. 
Hi, my name is Masha. I go to White Pine Elementary School, and my question is, why do kids like sweet the best? Well, we do have the sweet receptors on our tongues, the taste buds that taste sweet. Um, there are some believe, some who believe that there are more sweet taste buds when we're little, and that those dissipate with time, or they go away with time. Um, and there are also those that believe that um, sugar, or that flavor, can actually stimulate our brain and give us excitement. Um, and we actually use that in small infants. Um, we use sugar water to help um, calm them down when we're doing procedures with them. Hi, my name is Kaylani. Um, I go to Jefferson. Why are our ears shaped like this? Ears are shaped like a cone to help absorb the sound waves and channel them deep into the ear to the eardrum where then they are transmitted into electrical signals that get sent to your brain. Dr. Antik, why did you want to become a doctor? So I have always loved working with kids specifically and also advocating for health and trying to keep people healthy. And so when I was in college, I thought that being a doctor would be a good fit. So I did all the prerequisites and went to medical school. And from day one, I wanted to be a pediatrician. And even now, working at this job for 11 years, I still love it every single day. So I actually decided to become a doctor um, during college. I actually went to college to become an engineer. Um, I was very interested in math. I really did love the sciences. Um, but during that time, I actually took a time off of college. I went and worked, went to Brazil um, and spent several years in Brazil. And during that time, I really found out that I enjoyed working with people. Um, and so when I came back and started, went back to college, I realized that I wanted to change my field. I did no longer want to be an engineer. Um, and I wanted to work with people. And I thought the best fit for me would be to be a doctor. Females have a better, more sensitive sense of taste and smell than do males. Males are more likely to be colorblind, that is, not being able to see colors like red or green. But for all humans, the first sense we develop is the sense of touch. Hi, my name is Austin, and I go to Sayo Elementary School. My question is, how does the eyeball actually work? So the eyeball, um, it receives light. Um, if you notice, there's a small black dot in the front of your eye, and that's a hole that allows light to enter through your eye. Behind that is there a lens, just like the lens of a camera, that then helps to focus that light onto the back of your eyeball. And on the back of your eyeball, there are receptors called cones and rods, which help you perceive the light, and which then sends those signals to your brain to help you see. My name is Gus, and I go to Jefferson Elementary. And what I was asking to do was how can you smell when you're, how can you smell something while, while your nose is clogged up? So your nose has receptor cells that sense a particle, the smell of a rose or particles from food, and that transmit those uh, sensations into your brain to acknowledge the smell. When your nose is clogged up, sometimes some of those cells get covered, and so it may be difficult to smell things when your nose is stuffy. Mason would like to know, do any other animals have six senses besides the platypus? So the platypus does have six sen a sixth sense. Um, it's an electroreceptor. Um, the shark also has that same sense, so the shark also has six senses. There are other animals as well, like the porpoise or the bat, who have a echoreceptor, which allows them to use like sonar to sense um, objects that are in front of them. And there are other senses as well in other species of animals that they do have, and so the platypus is not the only animal that has six senses. Hi, my name is Logan. I go to Sago Elementary School, and my question is, are there really an anvil and hammer bone in our ear? Yes, there are three bones in the middle ear that connect the eardrum to the cochlea, which transmits sound waves into electrical signals to send to your brain. Those three bones are the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. And let me add to that. So the hammer, anvil, and stirrup are just the common names that we use here in America. Um, but the Latin terms for those are malleus, incus, and stapes. 
Hi, my name is Caitlin and I go to White Pine Elementary School. And my question is, how do our eyes sense peripheral vision? So peripheral vision is the vision that you see on the sides, which you can't necessarily focus on, but you do notice movement there. Um, and it's a perception of light. And this is actually done through your rods, um, which are a, a specific cell within your eye. Um, so the, the cones of your eye are in the center part, and that's what senses the color. Um, the rods actually extend further past that, and that's what gives you your vision at night, and also gives you your vision to sense um, movement within your periphery of your vision. You can try at night tonight, looking up at the stars. If you try to look at a star using your peripheral vision, you might actually see it brighter than if you look at it straight on. And that's because there's more rods on the sides of your eye to perceive the light than there are in the middle when you look directly at something. Hi, my name is Jack. I go to Jefferson Elementary. And my question is, why do we have hair in our nose? So the hair in our nose so it provides a very specific purpose. Um, besides sticking out of your nose like your grandpa's hair does, um, it's there to help collect dust, help collect dirt particles or particles within the air um, that could damage our lungs if they were to continue to pass through your airway. And so the nose has these small hairs in there that helps to collect that, and that's where your boogers are formed. Hi, my name is Aurora and I'm from Jefferson Elementary and my question is how does your eyes get blurry? So not everyone's eyes get blurry but that is something that can occur. Um, so what happens is within your eye behind your iris so the hole within your eye there's a lens and so depending on how that lens develops um, it can cause your vision to get blurry. So if it gets misshapen um, from what it usually was that can change your vision um, there's also people who get something that's called glaucoma, so they actually get a deposit of something within their, within their lens that causes their vision to, to be blurry and also get obscured. And so that is how our, our vision gets blurred, is that lens changes shape and changes the way it reflects the light on the back of our eye. Now sometimes my eyes get blurry if I keep them open and don't blink. And if that ever happens to you, I think that's because you have fluid that's lubricating your eye. And every time you blink, it puts another layer of fluid to help lubricate your eye. And if you try not to blink for a long time, then your eye gets kind of dry. And sometimes that can make my vision blurry. Hi, my name is Edena. I go to Seiko Elementary School. And my question is, when we touch something, we can feel the texture. Why can we feel the texture? So our skin cells have receptors that sense when we touch something and they are very very close together and so when you feel something that's rough versus smooth you are stimulating more of the separate skin receptors than a continuous feeling from something smooth. You can also feel that something is sharp versus soft based on how much pressure it exerts on your skin when you touch it and some parts of your body have more sensitive receptors because there's more of them in a small area than in other parts of your body. The brain is the command center of your nervous system. Your brain helps figure out what your five senses are detecting. So let's learn a little bit more about your brain. The brain weighs about three pounds. It's made up of a hundred billion nerve cells or neurons. Electrical impulses pass from cell to cell. Messages go out of your brain, down your spinal cord, and out to your body, and then back again all in an instant. The brain, the spinal cord, and all those nerves make up the nervous system. It's your body's information system. Scientists say there's enough electricity from all those messages in your brain and body to turn on a light in the refrigerator. The brain is made up of several parts. There's the brain stem. It controls your body's basic automatic functions like breathing. There's the cerebellum, which controls things like movement, your physical skills. And then there's the limbic system. That makes up about one-fifth of your brain. There are glands like the pituitary and the hypothalamus. They work with the brain stem to control body temperature, growth, and blood pressure. Then there's the cerebrum. That's the thinking, creative part of your brain. It's also the biggest part of your brain. Along with its thin covering the cortex, it's the part of the brain that governs voluntary movements. It's where you think, where you perceive or sense things. And because of your cortex, you can understand and remember, communicate and create. 
The brain has two sides. Each controls the opposite side of the body. Each side also controls certain skills. The right side of your brain controls music and art, the creative stuff. And the left side handles numbers and words and problem solving. And there's a band of cells between the two parts, or hemispheres of the brain, so that the left side knows what the right side is doing. The human brain is so soft that you could cut it with a butter knife. That's why you should wear your helmet when you ride your bike. You need to protect your brain. Your brain and body also put out chemicals called hormones or neurotransmitters. Hormones help regulate your body's growth, help you mature, maintain your digestion, even tell you when to sleep. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that send messages between cells. Some neurotransmitters tell your heart to beat or your lungs to breathe, while others help regulate your mood, whether you're happy or sad. These chemicals play a part in how you remember things, why you dream, who you are. Your thoughts and your feelings, your breathing and your growing are all controlled by your brain. And your brain continues to develop even after you're born and continues to grow and change even as an adult. Your brain is what makes you, you. My name is Rebecca and I go to Galileo STEM Academy. My question is how do nerves connect feeling to your brain? Rebecca, the nerves that we have in our body, um, they do sense many different things. So our sense of touch, um, we also have sense of vibration um, and sense of, sense of heat or cold. And all of these nerves are within our skin as they get triggered or if we touch something that's cold, touch something that's sharp, um, or touch anything, those nerves then send a signal which travels up the nerve into your spinal cord um, and then up into your brain. And so the nerve cells are very good at allowing that to travel. Um, the speed at which it travels can be upwards of 200 miles per hour um, as it travels from your finger to your brain. That's why there's no lag time from when you touch something to when you actually feel it. Hi, my name is Joshua. I go to Jefferson Elementary. And my question is, why do we have eyelashes? We have eyelashes to help protect our eye from dust and other particles in the air. Your eye gets very irritated if something gets onto the eyeball, and so the eyelashes help to protect you from that. Hi, my name is Sam. I go to Jefferson Elementary. Why do we have little black dots in our eyes? So the black dot in the middle of your eye um, or your pupil is actually a hole that allows light to pass through to the back of your eye so that you can actually see. Some people might actually have flecks of black within the iris or which is the colored part of the eye um, which actually contributes to the color of their eyes. Um, but the black dot in the middle is actually a hole and allows, us to, allows the light to pass through. Hi, my name is Evan. I go to White Pine Elementary School and my question is how do we decipher different smells? Evan, that is a great question. In our nose, we have lots of receptors that send signals of smell particles to our brain to sense the smell. And based on our experiences when we have different smells, that helps us determine whether we see something or smell something as pleasurable or unpleasurable. Sometimes certain smells can uh, evoke a memory in somebody that, of a bad thing, and so they consider that smell unpleasurable, while the same smell might evoke a pleasurable mem memory to somebody else and that be considered a good smell. Hi, my name is Same. I go to Jefferson Elementary School and my question is how do we see color? So our perception of color or how we see color is controlled by the cone cells which are in the back of our eye. So these are specific cells that are able to process the colors that we see and they then send that signal to the brain and allow us to see the color that we are seeing before us. Eric would like to know, how do your ears pick up sound waves? So the ears have a very specific design to them. The, if you actually look at your ear, it has a cupping shape which helps us collect that sound wave and then carry that in through our ear canal to the middle ear. And that's where that sound wave is then turned into a, an electrical signal that then goes to our brain. Hi, my name is Saksham. I go to White Pine Elementary School, and my question is what sense is the least important and why? So I think it's debatable as to which sense is the least important. 
to somebody who's blind, probably vision is and sight is the least important because their eyes don't work. But for every different person, they may have certain strengths in which some of their senses are more acute or stronger than others. So I think that's a very difficult question to answer. Dr. Brad, what do you think? I believe it is very dependent on the person. Um, I know for myself, I would probably say taste is the least important for me, or I wish I didn't have taste, because um, there are certain foods that I do not like and I don't want to taste. Um, and that's probably the same for most of you as well. Um, but I, the five senses are all very important in allowing us to process our environment and to, um, as we say, with taste, it's all the senses are kind of involved with that, just the sensation of touch within our tongue, the sensation of smell within our nose. So there's, all the senses are very, um, are work very well together. And so I, f I feel that they're all very important. If someone is interested in becoming a pediatrician, what should he or she study in school? To become a pediatrician, you need to go through college and do prerequisites for medical school. Then you go through medical school, which is typically four years. And during that time, you get to practice different kinds of doctor types. Uh, at the end of that, you decide what kind of doctor you want to be, and in my case, a pediatrician. And so then you do a specific training program just for pediatrics, which is usually about three years. So if you would like to become a pediatrician or just a doctor in general, um, there is a, a lot of school that does take place. Things that you can do now to help prepare you for that, um, to go to medical school, is by studying a lot of the sciences, so biology and chemistry. Um, physics are things that you'll have to take. Um, but also, they also want people who, they encourage you to do a lot of service um, and also to become familiar with the medical field. They encourage you to actually go and shadow physicians now um, in order to apply for medical school. Um, and so that's some of the things you would need to do in order to go to medical school to then become a pediatrician. I'm sorry, we've run out of time. My thanks to Drs. Antic and Bishop for answering students' questions today. Thanks, Joan. That was fun. Yeah, we learned something too. My thanks also to the folks here at St. Alphonsus for hosting us. Now you can learn lots more about the five senses and other scientific topics on the Science Trek website. And we'll answer more questions about the five senses on Science Trek the web show. If you want to submit a question for Science Trek, it's easy and you and your class can win prizes. You can send it as an email or as a video question, record it on your webcam or cell phone. And if you're an educator, we'll even lend you a camera. Our last prize winner was Paige in Mrs. Manning Flock's class at White Pine Elementary. So to find out all about the five senses and how to send in your questions and how to win, go to the Science Trek website. And each week, check out my blog for the latest science news for kids. You'll find it all at idahoptv.org slash science trek. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Science Trek. Presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore and Bettis family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. By the Friends of Idaho Public Television and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. If you want to learn more about this topic or watch our videos, check out the Science Trek website at idahoptv.org slash science trek.